What then of the outlook for Nigeria and Britain after Elizabeth? Here I think we must be guided by history. I turn first to words spoken by the Secretary of State for the colonies, Oliver Littleton, Lord Chandos, as he was otherwise known, on the 21st of May, 1953, during the emergency debates on Nigeria's constitutional future, roughly a week before Queen Elizabeth's coronation. This is what he said. Recent events have shown that it is not possible for the free regions of Nigeria to work together effectively in a federation so closely knit as that provided by the present constitution. Her Majesty's government in the United Kingdom, while greatly regretting this, considered that the constitution will have to be redrawn to provide for greater regional autonomy and for the removal of powers of intervention by the center in matters which can, without detriment to other regions, be placed entirely within regional competence. It is, at the same time, necessary to ensure that the common economic and defense requirements of all regions are secured. I next turn to the words of Sir Peter Smithers, who was the Parliamentary Private Secretary to the Minister of State and the Secretary of State in the Colonial Office from 1952 to 59 in the run-up to Nigeria's independence. He was also the Secretary General to the Council of Europe from 1964 to 1969. Writing in the Times on July the 15th, 1998, he said this, Sir, during the negotiations for the independence of Nigeria, the view of the Secretary of State at that time, with which I agreed, was that in Nigeria we should attempt to put together a large and powerful state with ample material resources which will play a leading part in the affairs of the continent and the world. This was attractive, but it involved forcing several different ethnic and cultural groups into a single political structure. The negotiations were complex and very difficult. The chief problem, as I remember, relating significantly to the control of the police and the military. In the retrospect of 40 years, it is clear that this was a grave mistake, which has cost many lives and will probably continue to do so it would have been better to establish several smaller states in a free trade area. In exculpation, it must be said that we did not then have the examples of the collapse of Yugoslavia, mm -hmm. <laughs> I knew Princess Katerina will respond to that. We did not have the examples of the collapse of Yugoslavia and of the Soviet Union before our eyes. It should now be clear for all but the willfully blind to see that it is extremely dangerous to force diverse racial and social entities into a single rigid structure, such as that which has been built upon the foundation of the Maastricht Treaty. Recent history suggests that it would be best to complete the development of the common market and to call a halt to political integration in Europe. Well, we all know about Brexit, don't we? Let me conclude these remarks by sharing with you what the new Nigeria will look like. I turn to the French philosopher Rousseau, 18th century, who define the challenge as follows. The problem is to find a form of association which will defend and protect with the whole common force the person and good of each associate and in which 
each, while uniting himself with all, may still obey himself alone and remain as free as before. This is the fundamental problem which the social contract provides the solution for. I ask for Rousseau's words in relation to Nigeria to be imagined as the Orange Union, in contradistinction to the Union of the Apple. When you peel the skin of the orange, you will see the segments sitting comfortably side by side, together making the composite whole. Whereas when you peel the skin of the apple, you will see the indistinguishable mass. That orange union in which the ethnic groups uniting to make the whole in association, but in which, an association in which they may still obey their own priorities and remain as free as before. I conclude by inviting us to proclaim loudly, the Queen is dead. Long live the King. And might I add, long live Prime Minister Sunak. <laughs>